Hi guys! In this video I would like to modify my LaVolta BPS305 benchtop power supply. In my review video I noticed that the fan is running all the time because it has no temperature regulation and if you're using this power supply to power a small project which only uses a few milliwatts this might get annoying. So I want to do something about that. And as you might have seen in my recent low test video, in the worst case scenario the rectifier is right at its thermal limit and if I'm already in here modifying the thermal management I might as well do something about that. But I don't want to spend a lot of money modifying this cheap power supply. And I also don't want to waste a lot of time doing that. So I don't want to design and build an additional circuitry or program a microcontroller. These mods have to be cheap, quick and easy. Therefore I'm going to use a few parts which only cost me 2 euros. This is a 70 cent temperature switch to turn off the fan when it's not needed. It is normally open and closes at about 45 degrees. I will mount it to the heatsink and wire the fan to it. I'm also going to be using this cheap uh, universal heatsink to keep the rectifier cool. It only costs 1 euro and it has a thermal resistance of 6 Kelvin per watt. And in addition to that I'm going to be using a few small screws and a few dabs of thermal compound. First up I'm going to disassemble the power supply, I'm going to desolder the leads from the transistors and remove this heatsink, drill a few mounting holes, install the additional parts and reassemble the power supply. After that I'm going to be doing another worst case scenario load test to see if my mods worked out. So let's get it started. So first up I'm gonna undo the screws at the bottom of the heatsink. Then I'm going to desolder the wiring for the transistors. So the rectifier is out, there is no thermal compound on it, so it was just mounted to the case. And on the back side I'm going to remove the positive wire for the fan. So now I will drill a hole probably somewhere in here to mount the temperature to switch somewhere like that. And also drill a small hole in here somewhere so I can mount the rectifier and the heatsink on top of that. So now I've drilled two additional holes. This one down in here for the rectifier and this one up in here for the thermal switch. I'm also going to be changing some of the washers which are a little bit too big and a little bit wobbly. A dab of thermal compound, that's enough, I don't need much more. So the temperature switch is mounted, next up is gonna be the rectifier down in here. Once again a dab of thermal compound, not much, that's probably more than enough. And also on the other side, because I'm going to be mounting a heatsink on this side as well. So this is more than enough.
Sadly, my camera ran out of memory, so I don't have all the installation footage. I only finished soldering in the wires for the transistors, I also wired the temperature switch to the fan and reinstalled this heatsink. Now that I am done with my mods, this power supply is ready for testing. First up I want to see if the fan stays off during no or fairly low load applications. Like let's say this power supply only needs to power a small project which only draws like 1 amp at let's say 12 volts. And I'm really curious to see how long it will take until this temperature switch kicks in the fan and at which heatsink temperature this happens. First let's get the ambient room temperature. So the room temperature is at 24 degrees and to watch the heatsink temperature I will clamp this thermocouple to the heatsink. Right now it's at room temperature. I have to do this because thermal imaging cameras have issues reading the temperature of polished aluminum because for infrared radiation it acts as a mirror. Now let's turn on the power supply and the electronic load and set the voltage and the amperage. Set the timer and get the test started. Here we go. So I slightly increased the voltage so the load is satisfied but we are at 1 amp at 12 volts and the time is running, the temperature is rising slightly and so you can see for yourself the power supply is displaying 1 amp and 12.2 volts, that's close enough and let's see how long that will take. As you can see the temperature is climbing but I am very curious to see how long it will take until the fan kicks in. Now you've heard the fan kick in at 50 degrees and after 4 minutes 50 that's a fairly decent time. I know those temperature switches aren't really precise but it does the job and as you have seen this power supply ran almost 5 minutes without a fan so I'm very happy about that. Now I'm gonna switch off the load and see how long it will take until this fan turns off and at which temperatures this happens. So here we go. So you've seen it, it switched off at 32 degrees and that's good enough for me. That's actually quite a big hysteresis of 18 degrees, but I can really live with that. I'm actually very happy about how much this less than one euro part improved the usability of this power supply. Now it's finally quiet when you are not using it, when there is no load on it and if you actually need power it switches on the fan and everything works like it's supposed to. So I'm very happy with this first mode. Now let's do the one hour worst case scenario load test to see how the rectifier does in its new place and with the additional heat sinking. For that I'm going to install the top casing so I have comparable results. I have changed my setup, I have my two electronic loads, I have my power supply, I'm gonna power it on and dial in my 21 volts at 5 amps. And for measuring the temperature of the rectifier I'm going to be using this thermal imaging camera once again. The initial room temperature is about 25 degrees. As you can see on the thermal imaging camera, this spot right here is the rectifier, which is the hottest part at about 86 degrees right now. These are the fins of the additional heatsink I built in, and it's at about yeah, 58, 60, something like that. Let's come back after an hour and see what the temperatures are like. So it has been just over an hour, an hour and one minute. The current room temperature is 24 degrees. So this part is the rectifier casing and these are the fins from the additional heatsink I installed. And as you can see the max temperature is about 92 degrees and the heatsink itself is at 71, 91, 72, 91 and a half, 72, 91.6 
As you have seen, the maximum temperature for the casing of the rectifier was 92 degrees and the maximum temperature for the additional heatsink was 72 degrees and it has been over an hour and I'd like to see what the temperature of the bottom of the power supply is and the maximum temperature at the bottom is about 75 degrees which is approximately 10 degrees lower of what I have measured with the rectifier in this place. As you can see this is the mounting hole for the rectifier. The electronic loads still pull 5 amps at 21 volts. This is the rectifier and this is the additional heatsink. And up top I'd like to measure the temperatures for the power transistors. So here we go, 106, 105, and you have seen 111, 112, 13, 13, 12, 15. Now that the load test is done, let's take a look at the figures. So these are the figures for the first load test before the modifications and these are the figures for the load test after the modifications. And as you can see the ambient room temperature was on the before test at 26 degrees Celsius and for the after test it was at 24 degrees Celsius. So I have adjusted the temperatures I measured uh, during the after test for the ambient room temperature and added 2 degrees. Before the mods we had a rectifier case temperature of 130 degrees and after the modifications we have a rectifier case temperature of 94 degrees. That's a decrease of 36 degrees Celsius. Before we had a calculated rectifier junction temperature of 152 degrees. So after the mods we have a calculated junction temperature for the rectifier of 160 degrees which is considerably less than before. And the additional rectifier heatsink was adjusted at 74 degrees and the power transistor case were at 120 degrees Celsius and after the mods at 117 degrees. These differences are certainly within the measurement and security and I can't really say if that's decreased or it's just a measuring error but it's certainly nice to see they haven't increased due to additional load from the rectifier that I mounted to the heatsink so the additional heatsink uh, offset the additional load from the rectifier quite well so I'm happy about that and because of these mods I greatly decreased the junction temperature of the rectifier. We are now well off to this side at 160 degrees which greatly improves the longevity of the rectifier for continuous high amperage output use cases. And I also saw a decrease in the case temperature of about 10 degrees so it's good that it doesn't get so hot anymore at this point and this somewhat decreases the risk of burning yourself although 74 degrees at this point is still quite high but it's not that likely that I'm going to need to touch this case at this point at full load so yeah I'm gonna leave it there. So my two quick cheap and easy mods have worked out great I'm really happy with the results and there's nothing to do to this power supply but just use it and I hope it will last me for a while so that's it for this video if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below if you like this video please leave me a thumbs up and if you would like to see more videos like this please subscribe to my channel as always thank you for watching and see you another time bye